Hi guys, you're watching Mr. H Makes and I'm Mr. H. Recently, I've been looking into customizing CC3 characters, creating custom morphs and making accessories in Blender, which is a free to use 3D program. I'm using a Blender add-on, CC3 Blender Tools, which has been recently updated. Previously, the export import process between Blender and CC3 was a bit laborious. And now because of this tool, it's been made faster and simpler. So this video is basically a quick look at this add-on and how you can use it in your workflow if you feel that way inclined. Um, basically, when you start, you should select the A pose. At least that's what I've read is recommended in the various other workflows online. And you export the object file, the nude character in bind pose. You can use those settings. And over in Blender, this is the CC3 interface. You would import for morph because you are morph editing. It's actually a very similar process for accessories but I'll be going over that later in this video. So you'd select your file and there is the standard uh, CC3 model. You can also import models that have already had uh, morph sliders placed on them. And I, I do that a bit later. So in Blender, you need to go to the sculpt mode and basically perform sculpting actions that don't destroy the mesh. Um, I'm just showing you the CC3 tools add-on. So you would add that on in the typical way that you do for Blender add-ons. But uh, yeah, back, back to the sculpting. I've only really tried the grab push, hook, uh, those kind of tools which which don't uh, alter the mesh too drastically. Uh, this is a bit of an experiment for me, but the results are pretty good. Anyway, so once you're done messing with whatever you need to mess with, you've got to go back to object mode and then you can export the character morph. Just give it a name and import the morph slider editor. So that's that interface. Uh, Previously, you had to search for an object key, but the great thing is with this add-on, Blender add-on, the object key is generated for you, which is a lot simpler. Now, earlier I had actually made a custom character using the traditional it's the digital human morph sliders and I wanted to try as an experiment uh, importing that into Blender as well and seeing you know how that worked or didn't work in Blender So there's obviously a lot of um, adjustments you can make within CC3, but for those which are extra or, or beyond the capability of normal sliders, it's good to be able to have a free 3D program that 
will allow you to do that. So basically I was just mucking around with the, the structure of, of the, the model. And I go to object mode and export. So back to normal um, and I've got actually two morph sliders, custom sliders, which I brought in. So you can basically mix and match amongst your sliders, uh, as well as the native CC3 ones as well. Uh, one curious thing I found was that the imported sliders tend to shorten my character. Uh, I never really got to the bottom of that, but I was pretty confident I could adjust it anyway uh, with the normal CC3 sliders to exactly how I wanted it. These custom morph sliders would be a good way to set up a template for some sort of alien species so you could easily create characters and just transform them into that species. I also tested different brushes um, in Blender just to see how well they worked or didn't work. Uh, snake hook seems to be okay. Um, again, it makes my characters a bit shorter, this slider. It also makes their boobs a bit bigger as well. Not, not quite sure why that is. Another tool I tested was the clay strips, which um, I thought would be interesting because it seems to add stuff to the mesh and create more detail. So I know you're not supposed to mess with the mesh, so I was just curious to see how getting this sort of bumpy, ragged look. Uh, on the skin would come out. Um, to cut a long story short, it didn't really seem to, to work that well. I mean, you can see there is a slight difference in the skin on the back, but not that kind of rough detail I was hoping for. This just may be one of the limitations. Uh, so it's up to you in a way to experiment with which tool works. Uh, but yeah, the, the grabbing and pulling seem to, to be have the best result. So after those experiments, I, I pretty much decided I would just go with the standard CC3 sliders and, and keep the head morph, which I, I like for this particular character. So of course you can mix your custom morph sliders with uh, any other sliders, which uh, extends an already quite impressive range of customization available. And uh, this is the eventual character which I created in CC3. And moving on to accessories using the same CC3 Blender tool. Uh, this time you need to import four accessory. Now I should have used the actual uh, final custom character, but I just used the generic standard CC3 plus girl, can't remember her name. And use that as the reference uh, where I was gonna put the horns. 
and obviously since you're not messing with the mesh you can just use any sculpting tool to achieve what you want to for the accessory um, now this is a very general overlook I don't know blender well enough to be familiar with exporting textures and UV maps and all that sort of thing but something I've got to learn and what I did learn to make this process work you need to go to the material properties and make sure that you have the default object material selected for whatever you're exporting that's one of the criteria or one of the things that you need to do to get a successful uh, import into CC3 so you export as an accessory and you import the accessory which I failed to do here because there are actually another two steps that you need to do now please skip ahead if you can't be bothered to watch this but uh, it might be worth your while so the other thing you had to do was make sure your modifiers all collapsed so you've got to click on the modifier and click apply just doing it for the other horns now I said there were two extra things you needed to do so the third thing is to optimize your meshes uh, when you use the sculpt tool you can sometimes get a very detailed meshes um, with lots of faces lots of polys or whatever and in this case in my first attempt i ended up with a 1.2 million face count which is a bit high and that was the optimized count on that those particular horns now there are different ways you can uh, reduce face count in this case I use the decimate modifier and that in itself has three different methods there collapse unsubdivide and planar I only ever used collapse and it seemed to work but there are other methods so if you come up with a better way let me know uh, in the comments below I would greatly appreciate it so I reduce the face count and of course apply the modifier otherwise you'll get another error message Once you've followed those those three steps then you can go ahead and export the accessory in theory successfully um, and import the accessory in CC3 and uh, yeah there we go now those horns go in the right place for that model because that's the model I exported as an accessory uh, but I wasn't too more too worried about moving it around in the the final character but in theory yeah you should use your final character as the, the base for the accessory just quickly checking the pose which is a good thing because I forgot to attach the accessory to the character. And that's 
but it's very simple. You can just select the part of the body or pick the parent that you want to attach it to. Uh, I clicked on the pivot because I wanted to see the gizmo. And uh, there you go. So that is a very general overview on how you can get your accessories into CC3 and also how you can create custom morph sliders. Uh, as I say, I, I'm not a blender expert, so I will be looking a bit more into that because I don't have a ZBrush. Anyway, please enjoy the music by my daughter. You've been watching Mr. H Makes and I'm Mr. H signing off. I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching.